babe, I can't go any farther okay. back. Hello. All right, all right, all right. Hello, Hi, hello, hello. What's going on, everybody? Happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. Ooh, it's tax day, isn't it? Oh. Oh. Yeah, that's a sad. That's a stinker. That's... Another stinker in this world. I know, it kind of is. <laughs> um, how'd everybody do? Gave a lot of money back. Yeah, pretty much, right? It's always strange. Which always is strange. why you need a glass of wine. Yes, hopefully. <laughs> cheers to tax randomly Wednesday in July. Yeah, in July. In July. Well, today we have a super fun Wine Wednesday show. We're changing it up a little bit, not much. But um, what we're going to do is we have a fantastic feast we're going to cook. Well, Cornell is going to cook. Cornell and Dobby are going to cook. Um, and that is... You want to go talk about um, that? So Cornell comes up with his really magical little recipes. Mm -hmm. And today he's making these little Cornish hens grilled on the barbecue with a spicy rub Mediterranean side. Mm -hmm. And then a yummy little plum dessert something. Yeah, it's going to be excellent. I think it is. I'm sure it will be. Because <laughs> um, we all know their cooking style is amazing. Yes. We're drinking... Uh, we, we, we have some Chardonnay C. Yes, yeah, so we poured the Chard C. We kind of felt like this would go really well with the Cornish hen. Um, but if you're at home, exactly. I think uh, also the Pinot Noir would okay. do really well. That's kind of what I was going for this time, but nobody gave me a Pinot Noir. They gave me this, but I'll drink it. Um, and then we're also going to do a little employee appreciation here at Bonobo. So yeah. we're going to talk to some of the employees and talk about what it's like with the elephant in the room, which is we all know, and you don't want to probably talk about it, but it's like with COVID right now, what do you do? Where do you go? What can you do? And if you're- Where do you feel safe? And if you're tuned in live right now, I please, we kind of want to have this open discussion um, because we're going to talk about, I mean, look, we are a winery and the way we exist is by having people come in here, socialize and drink wine. Clearly that's really tricky to do right now. Um, but we're going to show off the space a little bit, talk to some of the employees, give them a lot of love because they are here day in, day out. And their cleaning regimen has picked up tremendously. I mean, they're cleaning nonstop at this space. Um, so it's, again, if you have any questions or thoughts or things that you know, styles that you use, please uh, send them in questions, comments right now. We'd love to hear them because we're, you know, we're existing like everybody else is. I think it's kind of an interesting conversation that everybody talks about, you know, and so we might as well talk about it today. Yeah, and all the modifications that we've had to make, but I think our tasting room manager, Jill, is is running this show really in a big way, and yeah. she's awesome. So, and Jill, I think maybe we throw it to Jill right now. Yeah, let's, um, before we really dive deep into it to Jill, let's go okay. out to the guys really oh, yes. quick. Let's see what's and cooking Let's outside. see what's cooking because they have a fantastic feast. Bellas? Hey, what's hey, up? What welcome. What do you got going on there? Um, Dobby has decided to grill my buns tonight. So <laughs> <laughs> nice, Dobby. Yeah, yeah. So hey, so this might be familiar to some of our viewers. Um, you know, a few weeks ago, we did the uh, the pork chops that we grilled outside. So this is open fire. This is how we like to cook back home. And uh, so Dobby, if you want to show them. What we've got in there in the, in the little pit bull pan. Um, so we got some uh, Cornish hens. So we have the Cornish hens. We're going to dress up here tonight and then serve it with a green Mediterranean uh, salad. And then we're going to top it up with uh, a little bit of uh, vanilla ice cream with uh, bright uh, pears. And uh, yeah, I've got for dessert. So, uh, and with that, we're also going to. You know, pair with the three wines, the Pinot Gris, Chard C, and the Rosé. So we're looking forward to uh, another fun full evening out here. Okay, cool. Um, well, we're going to uh, thank you guys. We appreciate it. That fire is roaring. Is it ready to be used? It is hot. It is hot. <laughs> it is so nice outside. Um, you guys look awesome out there. It looks like it's kind of fall weather already, but it's not. It's the middle of summer. And... But we're having major thunder and lightning yeah. and rainstorms. <laughs> yeah, so it kind of feels a little fallish. So Cornish hen, why not? Um, all right, well, cool. Well, listen, um, now, Jill, um, I'd love to yeah. just do a little chit-chat with the cameras. Yeah, no. um, um, okay, I think we're going to turn that mic off. It's not a red thing up top. 
Okay. Um, okay. So. Okay. So. I think. There's so. Can you please maybe just go outside? Yeah, just go outside. We're still figuring out all these things. We have our hands out. Thanks for your patience. Um, okay, so uh, again, employee appreciation <laughs> yes. uh, Wednesday, Wine Wednesday. This, this winery would not be possible, would not yeah. be working, would not be as great as it is without the amazing employees that are here. Yeah. We are so grateful for them because they, like all employees, are on the front lines dealing with the public, and that is always a risk. So yep. we're very grateful for them. Right. And now with, you know, COVID cases going up, I feel like when we, you know, we're all so much into it as a country to, like, do our part, what we could do to make sure the COVID cases weren't, you know, exploding and, and getting bigger and bigger. And then we saw the numbers go down, of course, and they sort of flattened out. Things started to open up again. And now, of course, we're seeing the numbers go back up. And trust me, we are, you know, lucky we have low numbers here in northern Michigan. But at the same time, like, we don't know how long that's going to last, but we're trying to do our part. And at the same time, run a business, which, by the way, is really tricky if you can't have your doors open, which I know a lot of business owners are going through that same stuff. And so, again, if you have comments, please share them, questions ask, and we're going to tell you a little bit about what we do. And Jill, I mean, I'm learning this as I go as well. And Jill, our taster manager, is going to share with uh, the audience right now um, some of the protocols that we have set up at this point. Jill? Thanks, guys. Hi, everybody. How are you? Um, for those of you that have been into the winery, hopefully um, I've met you. A lot of the folks that have been on the Zoom calls, can I tell you how weird it is like being covered in, you know, a mask and being behind the bar and having people be like, oh my God. And, you know, that's about the level of celebrity that I will ever, you know, kind of get in my life. But it's hysterical, especially considering the, you know, the mask and everything that's on. But um, it's been great for everyone that has stopped in and said hello, that's been on the Zoom with us. Um, but so like Carter and Amy said, um, you know, we're running a business, but kind of more so than that, we're running a winery. A winery is, um, you know, when people come to a winery, they're coming to have fun. They're coming to um, either hang out with friends or converse with people. You know, when you think about wine in general, it's a very fun, lighthearted thing. Um, you know, it's, it centers around socialization and, and fun and all of these things, which are pretty much the opposite of kind of the environment that we're in right now. Um, so it has been a bit of a challenge for us to kind of navigate that climate. Um, but, you know, kind of like everyone else, like Carter and Amy said, we're figuring this out as we go, just as everybody else is. You know, there's no special business hotline where we get actual information more so than anyone else. So as things are being released, um, you know, we're taking that information in at the same time and trying to do what we can with it um, to make the environment still as fun and as safe as possible. Um, so we're, we're going to kind of go around to some of the different employees and talk a little bit about what we've been doing and you can kind of see how we've set up the winery. Um, I think one of the bonuses that we have is the amount of space that we have. Bonobo Winery is one of the largest wineries on this peninsula, on Old Mission Peninsula. Um, so we have a lot of indoor space that we're able to utilize in order to safely distance out our guests. Um, in addition to that, we have our patio as well as our lawn on the lower level. Um, so there's plenty of great outside space and seating. Um, so, you know, obviously not on a day like today, but on those beautiful weekends, you know, where we've got the beautiful sunset over the bay, um, you know, you've got that space outside. Beyond that, um, we've got boxes of gloves, we've got boxes of masks everywhere around the winery. Um, and especially with this latest mandate from the governor, um, we are being super serious about people wearing masks. Not to say that we weren't before, but you know, it's easy when someone is, you know, they go sit outside, they're enjoying a glass of wine, they come up to order another, it's easy to forget to put that mask back on. Um, but as Carter and Amy said, um, you know, we are seeing an increase just in exposures up here from people that are visiting from out of state, from downstate. And the last thing that we want is to put our staff at risk or any of our other guests at risk. Um, so we are taking the, um, you know, the CDC guidelines as well as the state guidelines very, very seriously. Um, so masks, we have disposable masks um, that we have for our staff. You know, everyone that's 
anyone that's kind of, you know, whatever about the mask, it's, it's not our rule. We're following the guidelines. So, um, you know, and our staff has to stand behind that tasting bar wearing that all day. And that's not a fun thing, especially when it's hot. So um, kudos to everyone for wearing your masks. We appreciate it. And for, you know, the patience and appreciation you have with our staff as well. Um, so masks, that's kind of priority number one. We have hand sanitizer throughout this place. Like literally, you could probably just get drunk off of the smell of grain alcohol and other things when you walk in the door. We don't, we don't want to totally, you know, have people do that because we want them to start actually drinking the wine too. Oh, um, yes, of course. But um, tell us a little bit really quick before we yep. go do some interviews. Uh, the, the testing that you that we set up with all the employees that come in on a regular basis. Yeah, so, um, you know, we've done this in the past, but again, we're really going to be more serious about implementing it. Um, there's this great screener that we found online through sparrow.org. Um, it just asks kind of the basic questions that, um, you know, everyone's kind of asking themselves when they're wondering if they're not feeling good or if they've been exposed. And the, the thing about it is, you know, we're trying to be respectful of everybody's privacy and everybody's personal space, um, but my, by still being healthy. Jill, are you on screen? Because we're just seeing ourselves. But I want to yeah. see your pretty face. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, is that better? Nope. No. Not yet. I don't know. There we go. Okay. Yay. Okay. Um, yeah. So there's a, a website at sparrow.org. It's a medical website. Um, and they've gotten a lot of information from the CDC. So it's a nonprofit organization, but they've put out this resource that's called the, the COVID-19 health screener. Um, and it, it just kind of asks the basic questions. Um, you know, how are you feeling? Do you have a temperature? Have you been, do you know anyone that has either been diagnosed or exposed to COVID-19? Um, and they're just, you know, I think what's important about it is it just kind of helps everyone to stop for a second and take stock of how they are feeling. Cause it's so easy just to be like, oh yeah, I'm fine, I'm fine. But just kind of that daily reminder of checking in with yourself, seeing how you're feeling. Um, oh yeah, if my friend of a friend did get diagnosed that could potentially have been an exposure for myself. So that's something that I need to be cognizant of because I am you know, frontline working with people on a daily basis. Um, so we're requiring staff to take this online screener and send the results in. Um, so we're not having to do you know, face-to-face -face asking questions or taking temperatures. You know, Everyone here is an adult. We trust them to, to do this, but um, so we're just asking them to take this test and send in the results so we can you know, make sure that our employees are feeling well when they're coming into work and just another way that we're trying to help kind of mitigate any exposure risks for our guests. That sounds super um, thorough, Jill. And um, I want to just change subjects really quickly because this is employee appreciation. And I want to hear just a little bit about you because oh, gosh. you are such a talent and so smart and so charismatic and you run this winery like nobody else. So oh. I, I just want to kind of hear a little bit about you personally. Oh, thank you, Amy. It's, um, it's definitely been a, uh, it's been a challenge, but it's been an amazing challenge. And I, you know, I started this job two weeks before we closed down for COVID. Um, so it's definitely been a fun experience for me, but, um, I love being here and I love working with all you guys. We've got a great staff. Um, you know, we've got great owners, Todd and Caroline, Carter and Amy. It's just been amazing. Um, but so myself, so I'm from the East Coast originally. I'm from New York. Um, I've kind of moved around a little bit. So went to school in Massachusetts, um, moved to DC after that, and then spent eight years in Chicago um, in the corporate world. And then one day said, you know, I don't want to sit behind a desk anymore. Um, I want to go work at a winery. <laughs> and so I have friends that live up here in Traverse City, um, reached out to them. And that's kind of how I made my way up here. So I've been up in Traverse City for about a year. Um, I worked at another winery here on Old Mission last summer, um, and then came to Bonobo earlier this year. And it's been an amazing ride. And I just am very excited um, to see what happens next here. And hopefully, get past all the COVID stuff and get back to just normal drinking, enjoying life at a winery. Well, luckily we have so much outdoor space that people can sort of get out of the stress of being in this pandemic for maybe an hour or two while they can go outside and feel less threatened and more safe. 
Yeah. And have some wine and some food. Exactly. Yes, exactly. <laughs> oh, and if anyone, the other thing that, you know, for those that do know me or have um, visited so far, I'm an avid dog lover. Um, and so if you do bring your dog, I have giant treats that I brought, I bought from Costco to give to all the dogs that come visit. So please, um, if you have a furry friend, you are more than welcome to um, bring them with you. And I will give them all of the love and cuddles in the entire world. So that's it. <laughs> love that. All right. So I think we're going to go check in with some of the other folks around the winery, right? Um, we've got some staff here. Um, you know, we made them stay on a Wednesday night, but they're drinking and they're, you know, we're going to feed them. So, um, you know, the employee appreciation um, and just giving an opportunity to show around the winery. So when people enter, we have this all corrugated off. Uh, we have these stanchions here. People, there's literally tape on the floor showing exactly where to go so people know exactly, you know, where they should be going. Ideally, um, we want people to just go to the bar, get a drink, and then go outside because there's so much room. But we have these stanchions here which literally show you which way to go. <clears throat> and then um, you can actually come up to the bar, which is a massive bar, and we're going to talk to one of our longtime employees, Sandy, who has been amazing. She's such a hard worker, and since it is employee appreciation, um, tell us a little bit about yourself, who you are, all that good stuff. Will do. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Sandy. Um, I've been in Traverse City about three years. I retired from um, a major chemical company and decided to pursue my dream job as a wine angel here at Manolo. Um, well, one, we love that because you are probably one of the hardest workers here. Sandy just doesn't quit. When she's working, she is always working. And she's, this bar is big, people. I built it myself. And when I built it, I thought, this is way too big. But I knew one day Sandy was going to show up at her door and just be miraculous and run around like she does, make sure everything is clean, take care of, and the customers are happy. So, um, what have you noticed? Obviously, we're talking about, first off, we love you and we thank you so much. Um, what now with all the stuff that is being set up and implemented, how are you feeling? How, how does it work for you? Well, I'm feeling great. I feel super safe. We've got these plastic sheets here. We're constantly cleaning the bar. We've got sanit hand sanitizer in our um, POS system. Every time somebody uses it, we're wiping it down. Right. So we're keeping ourselves safe as well as yeah. keeping yeah, and so if you're a business owner and you're trying to go through the same stuff, which is, how do you guys do it? How, what, what is your protocol? Because, you know, we talk about this on a regular basis, which I'm sure you guys do too. And we're trying to figure out, do we have more sanitizers here? Do we have more shields up here? Is it still personable? Is it getting weird? Yes, it's getting weird, but we're all trying to adapt and trying to figure it out. But again, at the winery, if you come by, and I hope you do, um, I, you realize how much space we do have. I mean, we really have a lot of space for people to sprawl out. And when we built it, <clears throat> we wanted to make sure that we had these joint but separate areas to hang out in. So you're still far away from other people, but you can enjoy your group. Um, Sandy, um, what is the one thing that you like or love about being at Manolo? Well, I'm not going to lie. The wines are spectacular. It's one of the reasons I decided to come work here. Also, the atmosphere here, it's very welcoming. Um, we've got all these little nooks and crannies so you can hang out with your friends. In the wintertime, you can come up and do book clubs, and it's just, it's just a place to yeah. Well, we, we love you, we thank you, we appreciate you. Now, we're gonna have some, you're gonna have some at Corner 10 here in a second. So let's go over this way. Um, Amy is going to, I don't know what she's got going on over there. She's got three million things. Come on, Amy. Right. Let's go. Hi. Um, We're going to bow in the gallery. Yes. So take it away. All right. While you guys are walking over to the gallery, just a quick note. So another thing that we ask like for, for folks that are frequent visitors is, um, is just again to practice patience. Um, we are constantly kind of you know, not constantly, but as on an as needed basis, switching up 
how we have things set up or how we have things done in the tasting room. Um, so again, as we've kind of seen this increase in exposure, we're taking additional steps to ensure people's safety. So, you know, we're gonna be changing kind of the layout a little bit. We're gonna be limiting access to indoor furniture a little bit. So, um, you know, we're kind of on going on an as needed basis, um, you know, making adjustments to how things work internally and inside. So um, we're staying on top of everything as best as possible and just making those switches. So please just, you know, be cognizant that things might not always be the exact same that they were last time that you're here. We're just trying to improve upon it. But if you ever have a question or a concern or you're like, eh, that really didn't work out too well, please, please, please let us know. The feedback from you guys is super helpful. Thank you, Jill. Okay, so we're in the gallery now and we're with our employee, Val. Hi, everyone. I'm Valerie. Um, it's nice to be here in the beautiful gallery. Um, just so you guys know, I am a Charleston native. I've lived here my whole life. I um, just graduated from school here in Valley. I went home for the summer and needed another job, so happy to work in this wonderful environment. How have you been feeling as far as safe wise? Being yeah, here. I think we're doing a really good job here of cleaning um, very often. We're all wearing masks. We're requiring all of our customers to wear masks. Um, and like they were saying, we have so much space to spread out. We really haven't run into any instances of having to, you know, separate a bunch of people. But other than that, I mean, I feel very safe and comfortable. So this is your first time working in a factory? Yeah. I mean, you can't complain wearing one all day. <laughs> people have been happy to drink it. So. <laughs> And they get happier the more yes, they drink. So are you going off to college after? No, nope, I'm all done. So I just graduated. Oh, oh sorry. sorry. Okay. Yeah, I got my degree, and um, you know, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do long term. Does it feel weird and now? You're like, oh, yeah. But I'm happy to be done with that. You know, I'm close that chapter and open up here. Yeah. Well, thank you again for being here. We really appreciate it. I'm happy to, you know, be here with all of our employees to enjoy. Um, Have you learned more about money? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and it's all local, which is another big plus, you know. Yeah. So this gallery is quite big. Um, we're clearly social distancing at this moment. Um, and what's really kind of cool about this space is that we have the like Jill was saying, we have a local artist that we showcase at least once a month, um, and you can buy their artwork. And um, it's just fun to have. <laughs> this is called COVID and the Forest. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> um, anyhow, so it's kind of a cool space that will just keep getting updated with different artists. So now we are going to go outside, and Mr. Carter is going to talk to Lindsay. I'm going to hold an umbrella just in case it's been raining. Oh, also, want to give a, a shout out to Sharon Higaki, one of our uh, wine club members. She made a bunch of masks. This is the second time she's made masks for our staff, all beautifully oh. designed. So, wait, thank you, Sharon. I didn't, Sharon, I didn't get one of those. Listen, um, sure. what, I, I have one what? with your name on it. Oh, cool. All right. I hope it has an ape going R. Um, okay, so come on over here. Outside on the deck, we have uh, a lot of space, 3,500 square feet out here. And um, right now, we're going to be talking with Lindsay, one of our workers who is awesome and amazing and super hard, and we appreciate her so much. What's up? Hi, how are you? Good. Tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, why you joined Bonobo Team, and uh, what you think about so far so i joined bonobo just a few months ago i'm new this year new to the wine industry as well um i moved up to michigan just before covid happened um, my fiance is born and raised here and we want to be by family and bonobo has one of the best views on the peninsula in my opinion mm -hmm. so i love the winery i love dry wine so favorite wine is bonobo's wine so I just, I love coming here. I love the space. I love the patio, everything about it. So I thought, why not join the team? So I, yeah. By the way, I did not tell them to say Bonobo's wine is, is great <laughs> and the best, but you know what? That's cool. Um, so what have you noticed now? Like, cause clearly our shift is different. You know, we're putting people outside. What have you noticed people doing as of late? So people come, you're allowed to bring your glasses outside. We have a lawn area down there with a beautiful pergola. 
Um, we've got some wine barrels where people have been standing and hanging out around the wine barrels and walking through the vineyard. So there's a ton of outdoor space to make you feel comfortable during a time like this. Um, you're able to walk the vineyards, get pictures, take your wine with you. And one of the best parts is we're dog friendly. So yeah. a lot of people are bringing their Bring your pups. dog, bring your yeah. pooch. Let him say hello. I have yet to bring my dog here because I feel like he may just run away um, and get lost in the vineyard somewhere. But, um, you know, the cool thing is outside um, and Gabe, if you just come right over here and then just look out there, it's uh, that's good. Um, I don't want the signal to go out. The um, <clears throat> down there, we have a pergola. We have a lot of barrels. We have a lot of seating. We have vegetables. We have a lot of room. And the cool thing is when people literally just take a hike and start walking through the vineyards, we're very cool with that. We hope people do. And I, I, you know, can't stress enough. Like, you know, when you're here with your, your significant other, your family, this is where you kind of want to be. It's the views. Uh, it never gets old. It never gets old. All right, Lindsay, thank you so much. Thank Pleasure. You. Have some of that food once it gets ready. Cause now it's food time. We're going to go back in. Oh, this bar. Yeah. Look at this. We just put this in because we're going to now start serving out here a little bit more. Um, just installed that yesterday. I think it was yesterday. I had a few people who were here help me put that together. I gave them free wine. So if you were here, you would have had some free wine. Uh, come on in. Um, I think we're going to go back to Amy is in there right now. And um, let's start cooking, people. Let's do this Cornish hen style. Hello. Hey. We're back. And I saw Caroline and Todd that are away on a family trip right now on there and i thought maybe we could say hi to you guys where are you exactly jill can you unmute that yeah i'm working on it todd you should know how to unmute yourself these days hello how are you can we hear yeah hi guys hi, hi guys. how you doing hi what's Good. going on where are you we are in north carolina Mm. Outer Banks. Outer Banks and enjoying a little uh, Caroline's family reunion, so to speak. Nice. My dad's birthday. Yes, yeah, 70th birthday. So we're enjoying oh. that. Well, you're having a little bonobo, I see. So that's good. <laughs> yeah, Smart. yeah. You know, we brought some along. Well, we miss you guys. We hope you're having an enjoyable trip. A, a yes. Needed vacation. Um, time yeah, it's a good little vacation and a uh, little sun, a little beach. So it's and you, uh, very and fun. You drove. Yeah, we drove. We drove. How was that? Great. Yeah, we stopped halfway through and then uh, just powered through. It was about 16 hours, so it wasn't bad. Well, Caroline even took the helm for a little bit. Yeah. So, you guys know we got a late start. We, we made it about four hours, so we got a hotel. It was kind of pathetic. What? <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. It's amazing. Good job. Well done. Yeah. Um, right. Well, um, we'll see you back here we'll next see, week. Yeah, we'll Caroline, are you going to be my sous chef or... Sure I am. Period. You could be there. I'm ready. <laughs> well, I'm I'm excited to see what uh, the meal is going to taste like and uh, yeah. how yeah. everything no. turns out. I know, I know you like Cornish hen, man. I know. We'll save Take you. Run. We'll save you time. <laughs> and don't worry, Todd. Everything is running smoothly, just like you were here. So okay, nothing okay. to worry about. Not true at all. <laughs> but it's all good. Um, get back here soon. Stay safe. Yes. All Thanks right. Thanks, guys. Enjoy your vacation. Um, we will. Let's, we'll see you uh, let's take it out to uh, now it's time to cook uh, the moment we've all been waiting for. So we're going to take it out to Cornell and Davi and uh, take it away, fellas. What's happening? Hey, hey, are we back live? Yes, you are. All right. It seems like Todd is enjoying his time down there in North Carolina. Todd's there, not Carter. Carter's here. Yeah. No, I say Todd. Oh. You sure? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Language so barrier. It, yeah. Hey, Todd, you're going to be jealous on this, man. The Cornish hens are uh, almost down here Whoa. for, uh, for grilling. Good. I should see, we're giving them just a nice little browning. Um, wow. We flipped them a little earlier on. I mean, the, the spices that we used on this was uh, a little bit of uh, mustard. Uh, garlic salt, uh, paprika, from the ch uh, red chili pepper, um, some curry, here we go, and cumin. So it's, it's all those uh, nice hot spices that um, goes well with the chicken, but also, you know, with the wine. And then what we do is uh, we 
it's clean a little bit of lemon juice over there, uh, freshly squeezed lemon juice, and uh, just to help pop that uh, those lovely flavors. And then once we are done uh, browning them up, we're going to put them back in the, in the pan and let them cook a little bit in uh, in some of that same mixture of, of, uh, of spices. But then we're going to add also a little bit of beer just to uh, sweeten sweeten up the pot a little bit. So. Wait, what are you going to do, Cornell? You're going to do add some to sweeten up the pot. What are you sweetening yeah, up? I'm going to sweeten pot? up the pot. What does that mean? I'm going to make it delicious to find out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you yeah. put amazing that yeah, that's the spices sounds super tasty, delicious. And then, what was the Mediterranean yeah. thing that you mentioned to me earlier? Okay. Just some Mediterranean salad. Ooh. We have a uh, cucumber again, uh, feta, red onion, um, tomatoes, cherry tomatoes that we just sliced. Um, yeah, I said avocado, and then we made a little. Uh oh, oh no! Little dressing, not not in the lab. It's really good, I promise. It's safe. And then we have some mint that we are gonna just garnish, yeah. garnish over, um, and it smells great. delicious. And that'll go with our beautiful, beautiful fire barbecue or what we say, braai chicken. Um, and yeah, we can't wait for everybody to to taste this. This is this smells amazing. Now, for those so, of you uh, that are probably wondering, since Todd is away on vacation, you're wondering who on earth is carrying this camera around, right? Well, it's none other than Cornell's son, Gabe, who started working with us recently. So Gabe, turn the camera around, say hello. He's an employee and we're appreciating you. Hey guys. <laughs> oh, hi Gabe. Oh, so cool, <laughs> so cool. Um, so, um, yeah, we, Gabe's been uh, instrumental in um, giving us all the details on Cornell. Uh, hey, 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 Carter, are you and Amy gonna come out here for a sec or not? Would you like us to? Absolutely. Okay, okay let's, let's go. Do you want your wine? I mean, and just so you guys know, the yeah, smell, yeah, so the smell from the barbecue is just like permeating into the winery. It's amazing. Uh oh, did we lose you guys? The the rain is not helping with our. Uh, wow. It's where, where they're back. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Um, this looks so fresh. Like, this salad oh. looks like I can kind of. This smells so amazing. I'm so impressed that we're doing this right now because we don't normally do this. Sorry, they don't really do it. Um, and I think we should kind of do this all the time. Uh, and I've said this before, if you come into Bonobo and you see these two guys behind me, ask them to cook you some Cornish hen or whatever we've made in the past. Um, I think they will do it, I really do. We'll be right here. Yeah. Hey, everybody down south on the peninsula is getting hungry now. So oh, yeah. we, might just, we might just be on this thing. <laughs> So, how do we cut this part? Are you, are you this one, this one's already got. We got them nicely browned up, and uh, we're gonna put them back into the pan with you know with a little bit of beer and sauce and stuff, and just keep it going. We don't want to dry it out. I mean, that you know you don't want to eat good jerky. You know, <laughs> you want to eat some nice juicy chicken. So, and then uh, and then uh, juice it up a little bit, and uh, yeah, and finish it up with the. Uh, is it? Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll let you guys keep doing this. Amy and I will come back in, and you guys are going to bring the back Yes, yeah, we're, okay. okay. we're losing the feed a little bit outside, so we'll have Amy and Carter come back in and keep talking while um, while Cornell and Dobby keep working that grill. Um, Look at that. So for those of you that I've, we've gotten some comments, which has been really great. I really appreciate it. For those of you that have visited us, um, you know, since COVID started, um, we, we, we appreciate it. And so glad to hear that you feel like we're doing a good job as far as keeping everyone safe and, you know, safely distanced and sanitizing and all that. So, um, you know, we really appreciate that, that we're, I think that we're doing a good job. That means a lot to us. So thank you so much. Um, yeah, so um, <laughs> here's, here's where we're going to 
really get down to the nitty gritty. Um, if you haven't, um, you, know, you guys have said a lot of stuff on uh, our Zoom chat here about mentioning. Thank you so much for coming out. We appreciate it. Um, I know I've seen some of you guys when you've been here because um, yes. we've been around a lot more as of this summer, myself and Amy, and we hope to see you guys more. Um, and in the coming weeks, what we do have in store for you guys is that every Wednesday, we're obviously still doing this wine, um, wine Wednesday, but we're going to feature again, a celebrity chef or celebrity in general, as we always do, except so this week we didn't. And we're gonna start cooking with the ingredients that are fresh here in the area. So for instance, cherry harvest starts next week. So we're gonna start cooking a dish, I think a salmon dish with cherries. I did a secret cherry harvest. Mm. When yeah. did I do it? A, a few days, Two days ago. ago. Yeah. What do you mean uh, secret cherry harvesting? Well, we can't okay. tell you about it. There's, a, this, there's this orchard that's about 10 minutes away and they don't spray. And my friend took me uh, after hours. It's a you pick during the weekend. Mm -hmm. It's called Wilson Orchards. There you go. No, nah, um, not so secret anymore. But it's but I think it's only around now for another week or so. And they haven't sprayed. And we went after hours because my friend is friends with the owner. You're not supposed to tell everybody. You snuck on. To I snuck on, and we picked the the most amazing cherries. They're so delicious and She's right very happy about in season. That. Yes. So it's the little things that matter thing. right now. So next period. week we're going to cook with cherries uh, and Sam and we're going to do a fish dish. And yes, you will get that over to you. We will get that um, recipe ASAP out. Are you going to cook this, Carter? No, no. So we is the general term for Cornell and Dobby. Um, and then uh, the week after that, I think we decided that um, peaches are going to be in season. So we're going to do a dish with peaches. Uh, the week after that, I think we're going to do- I love it. He, um, he doesn't cook at all, but he is dictating the menu right now. Well, I figure we do like food that is perfect in, in, in season. Why don't you like, start to prepare some of those? Dude, I planted that garden, all right? We're going to use those cucumbers down there too. And we're going to do squash and we're going to do- um, Some fresh, we've got oh, lots of fresh- Sweet herbs. corn, sweet corn. We're definitely going to do that. Okay. It's going to be taco Wednesday. Um, with the sweet corn. You can't change the Taco Tuesday. Yeah, take Taco Tuesday, Taco Wednesday. So we're going to do some sweet Watermelon corn Watermelon well. Wednesday. So, <laughs> and, um, so we have a lot uh, on store and in yes. store. And so we will get those recipes out to you guys. And we're also going to do another cheese pairing with the cheese lady. Yeah. So um, that's coming up very soon. And we will send out the uh, pairings that we will have. So again, what we love is the interactiveness of Zoom and talking to you guys and you know, cooking along with us or tasting yes. the cheeses with us too. Yes. I think we also, don't we guys, we need to have a Michigan State Wednesday since we now all have Michigan State garb provided by yet another of our fabulous wine club members, the Pruders who came and visited us with a bag full of Michigan State swag. That was pretty oh. awesome. Yeah, that was pretty sweet. Yes. Though I haven't seen my Michigan State swag. So, and I oh. did go... Yeah, he it was, got, yeah, I have it all. Don't worry. Yes. Uh, why are you hoarding it, Jill? Why aren't you giving it away? What's Thanks going? again, David. We appreciate it. We've got David and his wife on. Let's see. Are you guys unmuted? So nice to meet uh, you. Last week. You're welcome. Hey, just so everybody knows, we felt so safe out there, up okay. there. I mean, that was a great visit with with everybody out there, and uh, appreciate the food. I mean, you guys are the greatest. I mean, oh, I was a little apprehensive going up. I'll be honest with you, but as soon as I got outside, I totally relaxed, and I was just killing the uh, sparkling wine there. That was a great one. <laughs> oh, you nice. did. You did a good job on it, David. Yeah. <laughs> I rocked up the bill pretty you good there. Did. Yeah. <laughs> well, it was cool to meet you, cool to yeah. see you, and share Thank stories you. as well, and, mm -hmm. um, you know, talk about uh, Michigan State, um, the, the, the athletic what's happening, what's going on, what, what the year's gonna look like. And you know, it's really fun to connect with everybody, especially since we've been doing this on our Zoom. Mm -hmm. We don't really know everybody, but now we're, we're you know, we're, we're learning now as we go. Now it's summer and some people are coming up here and yeah. having little excursions and it's really lovely mm -hmm. to meet you guys in person. Yeah, and we hope now that Cornell is gonna come on in here uh, in a sec with those plates um, because I'm getting hungry. 
I know. Oh, really? And it yeah. smells so good. So good. It, yeah, it's, it's, we're going to come in tomorrow to the winery and it's just going to smell like Cornish game heads again. And <laughs> you're just going to want, <laughs> want it for breakfast. <laughs> Be like, Cornell, can you whip up another Cornish game head for us? All right, let's see what they're doing out there. Yeah, what's happening? Guys, Cornell, yeah, what's going on? Davi, are we going to, are we eating? I was going to go take a quick nap because I need, I need a two or three more minutes. So. Ah. Oh, so it's not yeah. ready. Okay. But no, you know what? You know what we can talk about here? Um, you know, it's been a while since we've been out in the vineyard too. You know, we'll, we'll start too. And in the last uh, two weeks, sees us go and uh, really bumped us out there. And uh, we went through a great bloom and uh, we're into almost like, like very touch right now. Um, so we're uh, way ahead of of uh, some, some of the years that we've had in the past, especially last year, where it was a little bit of a cooler year. Um, so by the looks of things, I think that we could probably start harvesting here, um, you know, in the middle of September, if, if not earlier. Mm -hmm. And all depends what Mother Nature is gonna throw at us, but uh, so far things are looking good. Things are healthy and abundance of fruit. And, uh, you know, me and Davi are just, I'm gonna say we're, we're, we're twiddling our thumbs here, but we're busy out, out yeah. there and uh, we just don't wait to get our hands on the food, you know? Yeah, it's so cool. You know, when I was out there um, yesterday or the day before with you guys and um, you were starting to spread all that compost. And I mean, that is music to our ears, seeing that all yeah. that compost go in and those vines are looking so healthy, so um, natural and you know as organic as they can be out here which is really fun to see because you know it you know it shows like we really strive to make sure that these vines are as healthy as possible so that way you're getting you're getting straight from the soil you know we're not trying to doctor these wines up but they really want people to go away the ter and, terroir yeah and, and really <laughs> just have that taste so they're not doctored up and so mm -hmm. so anyways the compost went on my daughter it was so our, stinky. Our daughter, okay, you can smell the freshness of the vineyard here, so there's no question about it at all. Like on the days that you guys are spreading, the, it was just freshness up on the patio. It was beautiful. Yeah. I, I love how you say freshness. It was so stinky. I, and the beauty of it is that our daughter, when she smells it, she knows the smell, and she's three, but she knows the smell so well from last year because it's now forever etched in her mind that when she was here yesterday and we were walking around, she goes, oh, stinky compost, Cornell. No, I, she loves Cornell. <laughs> she does, but still. She I mean, associates it, you with compost. Yeah, she associates <laughs> you with compost. And I don't think that'll ever change. <laughs> you know what? You know what, come, what comes from that stinky compost? It's beautiful flavor. That's what we do. You know, we add that and that you know, gives us the nutrients um, for the vines you know, to take up and really help to build those aromatic compounds in, 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 the, in the grapes as well. And when we get nice hot weather, like what we've been having the last two, three weeks or the last month or so, that all just helps us to uh, create these uh, uh, fantastic wines. So yeah. I don't I don't want to get the, the car in front of the horses here, but I think 2020 is going to be uh, an interesting year for us um, in a really, really good way for making wines. I think if you're taking care of your vineyards properly, you're going to reap the benefits from it. So, uh, so there we go. It's Cornell, it's actually pretty better, interesting right? to talk right. about <laughs> harvesting in this year because because of COVID, you know, all, a lot of travel, air travel, everything kind of shut down and the planet was very happy. And it was kind of coming back to its original self, mm -hmm. it felt like. And so as far as like weather patterns and migrations and wildlife and bugs and everything, you know, with us settling down and staying in place, the, the planet was able to rejuvenate itself. And so it'd be interesting to see the wine this time around to see how it's affected it. Oh yeah, oh yeah, definitely. We're, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see once we start harvesting, you know, where we're at and stuff, you know, with, with the flavor profiles or maybe even the, well, we'll know that before we go into harvest, I should say. Um, but it's, it's, I think it's, it's an exciting year for us, um, regardless of everything else that's, been, that, that's going on and been happening to us. Um, I think uh, 
the man above has really uh, um, blessed us with a with a good season so far, and uh, and I'm really grateful for that. Um, you know, knowing everything that we're going through. Yeah. Know? Well, it'll be very exciting to see once we harvest all what you're gonna make. <laughs> yeah. Sparkling, sparkling, sparkling. Sparkling. More sparkling, more sparkling. More sparkling. A lot more sparkling, that's for sure. I'm seeing some thumbs up across the board. Yep. Oh, yeah? Okay. Um, I got a thumbs up for some of the too, so. Hey, um, there you go. Uh, speaking, I don't know if you guys are ready to come in yet or not, but um, Davi, can you tell us a little bit, uh, as it is employee appreciation, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, your background? I am a... Uh, David Bunradi. I'm also from um, South Africa, like Cornell. Um, we met each other in the States, but we grew up an hour and a half from each other. We went to the same school, but we missed each other by a year. It's kind of like the, I don't know, I can't do it with the movie, but just keep missing each other, but we're here now. Um, very passionate about outdoorsmen, uh, cyclists, mountain biker, cyclists. Um, I love food and wine and just, just everything that goes with it. Um, just seeing people, how people appreciate wine, how people appreciate food and uh, nature and also um, respecting it and caring for it. Um, that's, that's always been a really important thing for us growing up on the farm in South Africa is you know, you respect the land you, you live on and it'll, it'll take care of you. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I started here last year, pretty much right in the deep end, started, started all this a uh, few weeks, but you know, uh, I've, done, I've done quite a few harvests with Cornell, so it's, it's not really anything new, it's just really hey, exciting and working with new varietals and uh, we have a few, like I said, we have a few surprises too, few exciting things that's coming up for this year. So I'm really looking forward to that. Davi, how did you go from South Africa to Traverse City? What made me? Yes, Let how me. did you find Traverse City on the map? Sorry, I can't hear. How did you, What? How? why Traverse City for you? Oh, um, one of my really, well, one of our really good uh, college friends, um, he moved here, well, he came here on an um, agricultural visa. And after my studies, I was looking just to either, I was going to come here or, here or um, Ireland or Australia. And Bernard, who lives in Mexico right now, he, uh, he was already here. And um, just everything he described sounded really appealing. And I followed him the, the next year. Um, started working on a cherry farm, and uh, yeah, the rest is history. So, wow. I just, I, hey, Carter, yeah, I just want to add to this. He's very modest, yeah, right? absolutely. And I think, yeah, yeah. I, he's, he's very <laughs> modest and humble, and that's uh, and that's what I like about him. And uh, I'm, I'm happy to say, and I'm happy to say, like, like you know, I'm, to have him as, as my as my wingman, you know, the guy right next to me that can. Um, to help him through thick and, uh, through thick and thin, you know. Um, he brings a lot to the table as well. Um, somebody that I can depend on. Um, and uh, besides the work side of it, we're great friends. Um, and that's something that, uh, that we value a lot um, in our relationship um, on and off the premises here. And uh, yeah, we just like to have fun and uh, if I could, if I could do something with heart emojis right now, I would. Oh, <laughs> I'm happy about it too. It's the yin and the yang. You have somebody who's very modest, and then you have Cornell, huge ego. On <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. Um, well, I think those guys are hopefully ready to start plating that and bringing it in. And in the meantime, we're going to learn a little bit more about Cornell when he does come in. Ooh, our Cornell. fantastic winemaker, but I'm going to tell you this short story, and hopefully that, um, as I'm saying this, these guys will plate this and get in because I know everybody has their lives to live and and move on. But um, 
Davi, up here on Old Mission Peninsula, there's a couple great mountain biking trails. And I am not a big biker, but I'd like to be active. And, and I used to be, I used to run a lot. And now I'm just like, you know, trying to do something. Anyway, Davi's telling me about this Strava, I think it is, like, whatever. It's like this app online. And you can figure out, like, people go up the road, which is Nelson Road, which is right by the winery here. And it's a dirt road. He tells me, start going up it. You get on this app. You can figure out who else has done it and how fast they go. And I think like Matt Myers, the Myers boys, if you know them, they do it really quick. Well. And they, I always see them burning by our house. So I start doing it. This hill takes me 12 minutes to get up. I asked Davi how long it takes him. And he's like, six minutes. Six minutes. How does a hill, like, I don't think I'm that bad of shape. But how does a guy cut off half the time in that? I mean, that just seems crazy to me. You guys so, should go at the same time. Then you would know. Then I would know. Yes. Why? So then he would show me how fast he is right in my face? Yeah. Yeah, that's not cool. I don't know if I would do that. But like, it, it, so Davi, again, to his modesty, he's, uh, he is a very much, uh, uh, very much an outdoorsman. Um, he's very athletic. He loves, uh, I love, Davi and his appreciation for wine because he really like connects and talks about all the different nuances of it. And uh, if you ever get a chance to come to Bonobo, talk to him. He'll tell you all about what's happening and and uh, how much he loves it. So they, we're gonna go to mute on this. So let's go to mute on that. Kitchen. And let's keep that one on. Okay. okay. Yeah, there we go. And Gabe, 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 camera number one. Can you turn on the Okay, so Cornell, what do you have here? Well, why does it look too good? Wow, it smells terrific right now. It is it smells so so stinking good. Um, now you said Cornish hen. These are these are pretty. They were working out before we. They're pretty good size. Oh yeah. I mean, yeah. clearly there's a couple in here, but um, Cornish hen, which I know you said you loved before because it was something good for like a date night uh, right. with you and your significant other. Um, because it's not a ton of meat, even though these seem extremely large. Um, it's something that you made. No, it didn't take that long. Right? Yeah. No, it didn't take that long, and you no. Know, uh, compared to a chicken or a turkey, your cook time is a lot shorter. And, uh, you know, and the thing that makes it so uh, that we like to do with this with, 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 uh, with the chicken and the turkey too, it's like, you know, the spice and stuff that we put on there. And the, the smoked paprika that went on here, um, the cumin, the curry, the, 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 the garlic, um, all those things, the, the salt and pepper. Everything played in a row into the smells we have. Mm. Well, let's get so, to tasting it. Let's cut it out and yeah. dice it up and play it. But, hey, hey Porter, Porter um, Todd has, has asked for confirmation whether or not you just said it smells so stinking good. So it smells stinking good. Listen, Todd, you're not here right now. I love you. You're my brother. <laughs> I'll say stinking good if I want to say stinking good because that smells stinking good. Okay. Okay. Jackson does still smell really stinking good, Todd. Oh, Sorry. Great. Um, our expert. Carter's just gonna eat off that tray right now. I feel like I should just like, you know, Fred Flintstone style. Um, hey. so. Carter, get out of their business. Well, I'm just, I'm, 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 I'm not in their business. Hey, hey Carter, Carter, yeah. Carter, it's, it's, Carter, it's not even, COVID not safe even. to just eat it out of the bin screen, hey, you okay? You uh, slice and dice a little one. Yeah. Yeah. You're good. The small. <laughs> so maybe I lied when I said this would be perfect thing for a date night because if that's half, I mean that's crazy. That's maybe a lot. That's a lot of meat right there for one person. Um, but um, it smells ridiculous good. And when you guys uh, like frying it, how long did you do that for? Did you buy it? Oh yeah. So I didn't. So how long oh, from long. from start to finish to this day? Well, we put them on the fire right around uh, 7 o'clock, right after we saw it, yeah. Yeah. to grill them up a bit. Uh -huh. And then it was about 12 to 15 minutes on the side to get them nice and, and brown like that. Mm -hmm. yeah, it all depends on the temperature, right. you know? Right. So, and you cooked it with some beer. Yep. So that makes it what? Special. 
special. That's your special That's sauce. I like, I like to use the, the beer. Um, you know, some people like to use wine and stuff. Um, but I think what we've got going here, um, the beer was really appropriate. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. More, more doing this talking because so what are you gonna do, do you, you need... better look busy in that kitchen crowd. I, I don't know what to do. I feel like I just use my hands. I think right Doc now. is trying to Cornell. be hey, you wanna get him? You wanna get some uh, yeah. All right, there you go. Oh, is this for the salad? Yeah. And there you go. Yeah, we've, we've hit our eight o'clock mark. So you guys, the countdown's on, get that plated. We should have um, had a timer going. Right, so as these guys are plating it, I'm going to- uh, Come back here. Sorry. <laughs> um, we're gonna ask Cornell um, how he got here to Traverse City, his backstory. He's gonna be working and doing and talking at the same time. All right, quick. So, uh, moved here about 20 years ago. Um, through an exchange program um, through Ohio State University. And uh, yeah, um, Michigan was not my first choice, but California was actually the, the one where I wanted to go with uh, in the Napa or Sonoma. Um, but it ended up being here in Michigan. And Which was the best night. thing ever, right? Oh yeah, I'm not, I'm not gonna complain about it. I mean, you look at the beauty here, we've got all the fresh water here. Um, and in the hillsides, everything is, I mean, it's gorgeous here. Um, one thing though, the winters can get a little long. And I think that's why you guys are over in California. <laughs> so, but maybe one day I'll have that, that liberty or that piece of ocean to go and travel a little bit during the winter times. No, I you don't got to go anywhere. You, 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 you got you to be here. I, I got to be here. No, yeah. you can go. Come on. Come on, yeah. man. What are you talking about? So, anyway, so yeah, I'm um, working with you guys and then I'm working with the other guys as well on the peninsula. I think I'm um, a person that's been around or one, one of the winemakers here that's been around on this peninsula for, for a while. Um, know this place. Um, I mean, you can wake me up at two o'clock in the morning and and like, hey, we're just in this spot, and I can tell you exactly where it is and you know what to expect from it. Um, yeah. From great, uh, great growth point of view. Um, what this, for this region for you, what does it compare to in other regions around the world? Is it similar to other regions for you? No, it's it, each region for me is, is special. Yeah. There's, there's different, um, you know, different soils, uh, different people. Um, with different philosophies, different weather patterns and stuff like that. So each region is really special and it's kind of like what you make, what you make out of it. You know, mm -hmm. if you, if you hustle, I think you're going to be able to, uh, yeah, succeed in this. So, um, so now we got things going here for us. Um, got a plate here with the Greek slash Mediterranean salad. Dari, uh, Dari, would you, uh, did we talk about the salad, right? We did. Oh, we did. Okay, perfect. So I think, yeah, Father should probably put it to taste. And while he's doing that, I'm going to pull out the, um, the dessert for us. Um, oh, wait, what dessert are you making on top of this bag? You know that I always have a spin to me. You do. So, I love your surprise oh, thing. That's right. Oh, so, this is your guys. Oh, nice. That's a big um, piece. Okay. Um, why don't you shoot that, they're coming out real quick. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Okay. Um, so yeah, all right, come on over here and um, we're going to do a little taste test. I don't know why. I mean, get the lotto to really just do this. Taste these fantastic meals, I feel like. Yeah, right? I know. I don't know how did we Did you send this up? I think I did. We're going to try that all the time. Just to, you know, get you a little bit. Oh my gosh, that is really tasty. Oh my gosh, that is so good. Mm. Wow. That salad is so good too. All right, um, where's the staff? Isn't this staff appreciation? Get them in there and get them It's staff appreciation, yes. And by the way, speaking of staff, Cornell is being humble. He's one of the most recognized winemakers for sure around the area. He's been a great friend of ours for a very long time. Um, he he made the first amazing, what was it? Riesling, yeah. <laughs> Riesling here for, for us. Here. It was so fantastic. And um, he, he was moonlighting with us um, just to help us out when we got started start. in the very, very beginning. And we really appreciated that. And um, 
you know, now he's here with us. And so he's an so ex lucky. excellent winemaker that's been around the block and knows, like he said, we're fighting for old mission um, land knowledge supremacy. Because I grew up on this property. What? I grew up on this land? area. Don't say supremacy. That sounds bad. Okay, sorry. Knowledge. Knowledge. Okay. Supremacy. That's different. What are you saying? What are you saying? Land knowledge well, he said, he said he said he didn't wake up at two in the morning and know where he's at. So, oh, yeah. Anyway, it doesn't matter. But um, so anyway, um, but we're very fortunate to have him. And if you have never tasted the Bonobo wine that he's making, it is fantastic. But now he's making a terrific dish too in the dubbing. So these are just like perks because he's such a fabulous winemaker, but such an amazing chef. And we're mm -hmm. so lucky to have these recipes that he keeps coming up with. No. All right. Well, we're we're well past the hour of eight o'clock. So yes. yeah. Can Let's wrap quick, this up um, and can you quickly go to here's to the staff. Go. All right. All right, so what we have here, woo, don't slide, it's some ice cream and a plum, and then we boil down some, some plums as well in here, All right. and then uh, we're going to sprinkle just a little bit. Another. Oh, this is a mess. Uh, yeah. Most importantly, I'm sure it tastes delicious. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's all right. The taste is there. All right. Where is the it's staff? Oh, yeah. Oh, this is the first time that this is Sugar and uh, oven zest, um, and then we uh, put that in the oven, um, caramelize it a little bit, and then we put it on uh, oh, the so vanilla. I don't know why, but it tastes like an orange symbol, like an orange, like a yeah. creamy orange popsicle. Cool. I know it's plum. Is there an orange in this? Yeah, orange zest. Oh, the orange zest. That's why. Yeah, but the, the, um, flavor, the texture vanilla. of the plum. Maybe when he put the in the oven for a little while. Wow, that is so delicious. Um, I know we went overtime for sure on this one. That's um, thank you guys for joining, you us. for joining us. We appreciate it. Uh, again, employee appreciation week here at Bonobo Winery. Uh, to all the staff that could not be here today, thank you so much. We appreciate you. We love you. Um, we really value you. And um, if, uh, for the people who've never been here, Stop by sometime. If you have been here, thank you. Come again and uh, wear your mask, have your hand spray. COVID is real. And, um, but, you know, so are we. We're all humans and hopefully we can all hang out together soon. Uh, Cheers. Glass of wine. Yes. Cheers. Cheers. Salut. Salut.